What do you think you're doing carrying marijuana around in your pocket? At the end of 1969, the silent majority was fighting back against the counterculture. Even the hippies were tired of the hippies. And they got here a day later. They decided to bury the hippie. She was just decided to be one. Don't bury him. Dennis Perone's last stop before deployment in Vietnam was San Francisco. The third day I leave, it was the, the summer of love. You know, I did it like everyone else, I slept the park, I ate acid, and then three days later, I went to Vietnam. She tried to give me a, a gun. I said, I, I can't take a gun. I said, well, I said, I close my eyes. When I shoot. During his time at war, Perone realized he was gay. After his tour ended, he returned to San Francisco in 1969. The wind blowing, hair. Hate ashtray, food, the Grateful Dead. I like this place. I think I'm going to stay here forever. Perone studied psychology. As part of his studies, he spent time at Napa State Hospital talking with patients. He witnessed the impact of homophobia. In those days, I mean, it was against the law to be gay, totally against the law. And I went to Napa and I asked people, What are you here for? I'm gay. I said, well, what else? And yeah, that's it. So you were, you were committed, committed to a, a you know, insane asylum. Perone felt the stigma himself. Yeah, I was a candidate for suicide easily. Gay, Italian, church. I was a candidate. And marijuana helped me pull me out of the depression and let me see that there's a better life somewhere. Convinced he was serving a public good, Perone opened the Big Top Pot Supermarket in the top two floors of a Victorian in the Castro. Bay Area photographer Michael Zagaris. Everyone in the city would go to that place to score. And when I say everyone, I mean people from City Hall, people, you'd see a supervisor from time to time. Four scales, no waiting. And it was really big, big popular in the neighborhood. And, and lines, and lines. I had trouble because of parking. You don't know, school people's parking in San Francisco. The supermarket drew the attention of the cops. During a raid in 1978, Perone was shot in the leg by an undercover officer. He took a deal for having 200 pounds of pot. He would eventually spend three months in the hospital, followed by three months in jail. Perone battled the law for most of the 70s. When the AIDS epidemic hit, he turned his attention to those suffering around him. It wasn't a day I wouldn't go to a funeral, a uh, wake uh, of some kind, a memorial. One day I put three people in, in the ground. Marijuana is the only, I, I, well, the only drug we had. It was a cure, but made people feel better. Well, the other ones, easy to know them, made people feel worse. Perone saw that AIDS patients who smoked marijuana had fewer bouts of nausea and their appetites improved. The concept of compassionate medical use was born. When he lost his lover, Jonathan, to AIDS, despair turned to determination. You might say survivor's guilt. I had nothing. I lost all my friends. Why me? Why do I have to live? If no one else gone? Why the guy I was going to spend my life with? Is he dead? And I'm still alive. A lot of it was guilt. Because why me? But I had to do something. Because I was saved. I think for a reason. And that reason had to be marijuana. Determination turned to action. Perone opened a medical marijuana club. He fought a nearly continuous legal battle. He launched the campaign for Proposition 215, the Medical Marijuana Initiative. He was under a felony drug indictment in November of 1996 when California voters passed the new law. It was the first compassionate use marijuana law in America. I helped build that consensus. 
I'm taking a little bit of credit for it. I just helped build the Gnosis. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel vindicated. In the end, the end of my life, I feel I was right. Peron suffered a stroke in 2010. But one of his favorite memories from the early days is celebrating during the 49ers' first Super Bowl parade. Michael Zagaris was team photographer at the parade when Perone chased down the cable cars carrying players. So here's Dennis running along, real long hair, big Safeway shopping bag, and he reaches in and just like throws about 35 or 40 just big bombers. And they're just like showering us. I didn't see Giant Feinstein, but I threw it out of the car and he hit her in the head. So I'm like, what the hell happened? These people grabbed the, the pot and she realized later on it was a joint hit me in the head. There are now more than 500 medical marijuana clubs in California. We are here now. We are never going away. They take us out in a coffin, but we are going to make our stand. Change has always been one of the Bay Area's primary exports. Even as Dennis Perone was transforming the way we think about marijuana, a shy engineer from San Jose was designing a way for us to think differently about everything. But I was just a humble little engineer who would only stay in, in the laboratory. A driver slapped.